like oh, you're Tom Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. It's Tail Gegenhardt who is down, and this does not look good for Tail Gegenhardt. Cycling is a dangerous sport. We can make it safer, <clears throat> it'll never be safe. They're just sending over 100 kilometers an hour, bit of styrofoam on their head, like right, that's it. It's dangerous. And now you have to be educated better to know it's a dangerous sport um, and take less chance, so less risk. Veteran of 29 Grand Tours and the recently elected president of the Cyclists' Union, Adam Hansen, has his work cut out in trying to reduce those risks where he can. At this year's Vuelta España, riders were furious with the organization of the opening team time trial. I did see the start times before, and to myself, I was like, ah, that's late, you know? But, like, no one said anything. So if, if the rider's not saying anything, the team's not saying anything, and traditionally it's done like that, okay. Um, you know, I don't want to be the annoying person that interferes in, <laughs> in, in all these races. But when it happened, I was, I was a bit upset with the UCI. There were some talks like, why didn't the riders stop? Why didn't the team stop? And there are already riders and teams that started. So if you were to negotiate with the organizer, UCI, so they can just say, you can start. If you don't start, you don't have to. And if you don't finish, then you don't start the next day. If you don't save, you don't change anything. Take them in. No, no, no. Oh, you don't care. <laughs> we do get threatened sometimes, losing you know your place in the race. And for the UCI not to step in, um, to me, this is a bit unacceptable in that sense. I think uh, today what the organiz organization should know is that it's just dangerous and they should think about safety and just a shame that, that the race, I mean, it affects on everybody uh, for sure. The, all the GC teams, they went just super slow because you couldn't see anything, you couldn't race at 100%. It's just, yeah, it's just strange that they let us race in, uh, in the dark like this. It was crazy, especially for the last few teams, you know, they were racing in more or less darkness, you know, and we were riding back to the bus in open traffic with no lights or anything and you know it was just it wasn't ideal with it after the unrest from the team time trial an unhappy peloton questioned the safety of the fast and sweeping descent in wet conditions to the finish of stage two i don't know if it's the organization or whoever it is but they seem like uh, they don't care about our safety at all we started the negotiations the night before uh, and we asked for what was actually um, happened in the end. And this was uh, shot back and it's good when the riders take in their own hands. And that's that's what happened. The riders have said, no, yesterday was super dangerous. Today we want to make it more safe. So the riders took in their own hands. And that's the thing. When you deal with organizers, when they think you're not united, they don't really um, let's say take your negotiations seriously. But when they see that you're united, yeah, they listen very quickly. As organisers look to maximise the potential for excitement, does Hansen believe courses are therefore being designed to be more dangerous? If you just had uh, 10k straight into a, a city, big roads, it's going to be pretty boring until 2k to go. If you put a twisty section, 6k to go, super narrow roads, goes to big road, and then three kilometres just before three kilometres, you make it tricky. <clears throat> every team will be fighting for position to the three kilometer mark because that's the safety zone where if you crash you include in the, the the same time as the front group and that makes a far more exciting race it does make a far more dangerous race because position is so important so riders fight for it and that increases the the, the chances of crashes so i don't think the intent there is for um creating a finish for crashes the more the intent is to make it exciting which is a result is a high chance for a crash. And it just comes at the rider's expense. But even with rider safety as a priority, problematic situations can still occur. Oh, oh no. So with the Kung situation, there should have been someone to stop him. He got back on his bike and he went before the following car could even um, stop and get out. The following car did not see that the helmet was broken. So there's no instructions if the driver should drive and, and view the rider, because you're not allowed to do that. You can't drive in front of the rider in a time trial. In time trial, it's only one-way communication. So the car can speak to the rider and, and the rider cannot say how he feels. If the rider's riding and it's and he's going, you know, maximum effort, then, you know, from the car's point of view, it looks fine. Crosses the finish line, looks super bad. Um, they said he had a mild concussion, but obviously it was very bad if he had to have surgery for his cheekbone. And this is where we have to think of a way to make sure that riders don't do that. So what changes are the cyclist union and organisers making to reduce the risk inherent in the sport? 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now how on earth has that happened? There's a safety group getting started called SAFEGUARD, and this is one of the things we want to tackle. We want to go around and make sure that all the organisers are following the UCI regulations and make sure the UCI enforces them. Just by us being there, the riders felt a bit safer, that we're watching everything, you know, we're making sure the finish line is, is wide enough. Um, we're, we're checking where the motorbikes in the convoy, if there's too many there, why can't they get to the front? How can we find a better solution to get the motorbikes in the front? And here goes today, Pogacar. It's another acceleration, and it's not the fans, it's the motorbikes. Oh, no, no. So I've had organisers reach out to me and, and show the work they've done, which is great. And especially in the Velta, it looked like in the last few weeks, they were trying to outmatch other races with um, the safety nets and the padding. So riders have been saying it's more safe. Organisers are trying a lot more. Future is going to get a lot safer, I believe. But at the moment, there's definitely just been public awareness, also the pressure from the organisers to make more safe. Definitely, it's been, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's getting safer, that's for sure.